Do you think James Gunn is a good fit for a Superman movie since he's directing one? I, listen, all I want is a Superman movie where he's a Boy Scout. That is all I want. I like it, it's so man. Superman was so f good back um, in the DC animated universe because they did it so well with him. He was a a, a good a, he was a good cinnamon role. He was a good boy, you know, um, who wasn't afraid to occasionally get stern. Like, I think I I think I saw this on Twitter just the other day. But the very first interaction between Lex Luthor and Superman in the DC animated universe like series was Lex Luthor got some like robot mecha tank thing that Superman beat the shit out of. Superman then went over to Lex Luthor's penthouse window and basically just stared at him for like two minutes until Lex lost his nerve and threw something at Superman, which he caught and crushed and said, like, I've got my eye on you. And he flew off. And he's a Boy Scout, but he's capable of being angry at people. Like, he, ha he has a wide emotional range. And they made Superman wrong in the entirety of the first season of Justice League Unlimited, which is not easy to do because he's still like a positive, optimistic kind of guy the whole way through. Just, he, he's, he's wrong. Does anyone, who, I can't show it, man, but who here remembers the fight between Superman and Captain Marvel in that one episode of Justice League Unlimited? The, the basic premise is that Captain Marvel is it, 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 literally like a kid in the body of a superhuman. Um, he says Shazam, the lightning bolt, then he's about as large as Superman is. Uh, not as strong as Superman, which is made evident in the fight, but, but very, very strong. And basically, Lex Luthor, who's running for president, is trying to do a bunch of phony PR bullshit to make him look good. You know, he's a billionaire. He's spending his money to look good to the, to the press. And he, he, he builds a city that is entirely for, like, orphans, I think. He, he literally builds, like, an orphan city. Like, like, if you're an orphan or homeless or whatever, you can live in this city free of charge, we provide, like, it's free energy, free utilities. Like, here, you can get your start again. Here you go, you know? Um, and it's all powered, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm footing the bill for all of this. He's doing the optics game, right? And Superman is, like, really distrustful of Lex Luthor. Uh, because at this point, Lex Luthor, I mean, he's running for president. He's not playing the villain thing. He's not doing supervillain shit. But uh, uh, Superman's really distrustful. And um, Captain Marvel, you know, who, again, is a kid who's, doing the Shazam lightning bolt thing is trying to be more of a presence in the justice league at this point. And he's not like one of the higher upper echelon members like Superman or wonder woman or whatever, but you know, he's, he's making an effort to, um, engage publicly. And, Oh, did I say captain Marvel? Sorry, Shazam. Aren't they like similar in some ways? I'm sorry. I'm mixing them up. I'm uh, here. Look, this is who I mean. Okay. Shazam DC animated universe. I have a very vivid recollection of how this all looks in my head, but I got the name wrong. This is what he looks like, okay? He's like a he's like a ten year old kid, but he says Shazam. There's a lightning bolt, and then he's like this, okay? You can see he's a big guy. See, look at that, big guy, real big, tall too. I think he's a bit shorter than Superman, if I remember correctly. He used to be called Captain Marvel. Okay, okay, gotcha. They are the same per. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna say Shazam from now on, okay? I'm just gonna say Shazam. But anyway. Lex Luthor's doing a PR stunt for the opening of the city. It's going to open the next day, whatever. Superman shows up, and Superman's basically saying, you know, uh, so, so like, what's the catch? And Superman notices there's something deep below the city that's encased in lead, which is the one thing Superman can't x-ray vision his way through, you know? Because lead bro blocks x-rays. It's, it's like that in real life, too. And he's like, hey, yo, what, what's down there, um, Mr. Former Supervillain? Uh, and Lex is like, whoa, what do you mean? Down there? Uh, nothing. Mm, what? Under this giant city full of orphan children? That's, that's, that's nothing. Don't even. Mm. And, and of course, Superman is like, you know, um, all right. And he, 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 he punches the gray. He's like, okay, well, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to find out. But, but Shazam is also there. And Shazam is like, okay, well, hold on a second. Like give Lex Luthor literally five picoseconds to explain what's going on. Um, and, and Superman basically just throws him like into a building. And then Shazam gets up and goes back to Superman, who's drilling his way down, like like trying to knock down the, the, the ground foundations to get at this underground vault. And Shazam shows back up and he's like, okay, that was very mean of you. I'd really appreciate it if you could just take a second to talk. And then Superman like decks him. <laughs> and, and the rest of the episode is a fight between them. 
that Superman definitely started that wrecks the entire city. And then it turns out the thing that was in lead was an energy source that was powered via kryptonite. And Luther put it in lead to keep the kryptonite from seeping out and hurting Superman when he visited the city. So the so Marvel was completely correct there. Or, or sorry, Shazam was completely correct there. And afterwards, Shazam resigns from the Justice League. And I don't actually think you see him again in the whole series. I actually think he's done after that. Um, but the whole arc of Justice League Unlimited that, that, that builds up is that basically all of Superman's instincts for crime fighting are wrong. Superman has an unjustified faith in the government as an institution in a very liberal fashion and he's directly called out for this by like socialist coded characters um he 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 believes in his own righteousness in a way that makes him really like resistant to criticism uh he he goes from being kind of a boy scout into more of like an authoritarian and the whole like okay well if they can't sort this out then i'll do and it's very naturally done and very well progressed and i genuinely i think a good character study where you make him the wrong one without making him like some kind of edgelord dipshit. And all this whole context is that it's like meant to be, well, like, what would you, what would you like, what would it take to make Superman a villain? And they met the Justice Lords in a, in a previous thing in the Justice League. And it's like, okay, well, how does Superman become evil theoretically? This is how. And they, they leave that out. It's really good. I know I sound like I'm soying over this. And that's because I objectively am. But at the same time, I've consumed a lot of superhero media, DC, Marvel, whatever else. Most of it is total crap. There are some really good classic graphic novels. Um, there are some movies that are good. For the most part, it is crap, okay? However, I legitimately defend the first season of Justice League Unlimited as maybe one of the best in the genre as a piece of media and probably my favorite take on Superman, specifically because they make him out to be the bad guy in some cases, uh, without deviating from his character, without making him some edge lord. They don't, don't they don't do some like oh you know Lois dies and he turns evil overnight. You know none of none of that fake like character development cold snap shit. It feels really good. I gotta rewatch it. I've, I've rewatched it so many times. It's, it's really, really good. Yeah. What was the Justice Lords? Uh, it was it was like alternate universe Justice League that are evil. They're, it's they're, they're, it's like Superman's wearing a black suit. You know that bullshit. That was that was in the Justice League. I'm talking about first season Justice League Unlimited. Um, oh, they also have a conspiracy theorist character. That's pretty fun. You know the question. He's pretty cool. I love you guys. You guys know that. I love you. Hey, sub. Uh, normally we talk politics. Have you seen Red Sun? I've read Red Sun. Yes, the Red Sun comic or graphic novel is uh, is excellent. Yeah, the question is literally a libertarian idiot. Yeah, but he's great. I I he the the, the guys the <laughs> sorry the question is like the okay you know how Batman's supposed to be a detective but he never does any detective work and he he just shows up and punches people and all the detective work is done off screen because it would be boring to have this like super muscular guy in a gimp suit explain how he like spent eight hours going through internet logs or whatever um the question is the guy whose job it is to do the stuff that batman only does off screen and he looks like this i love him so much he's literally just wearing a face mask that that is skin toned and he wears a suit and a fedora and he walks around talking like this um and like asking people leading questions it's the the show makes fun of him for this no that's his actual face that's his actual face no it does it depend on like the it does it depend on the interpretation or like or like by the writers or something it was revealed two scientists created artificial skin that was called pseudoderm which was supposed to work as a bandage however due to an error the artificial skin was deadly when applied to injury but they still made it pushed it to the third world they gave him a mask of pseudoderm. Okay, so so it, it it's a mask of like fake skin. This is his actual face. Okay, in the DC animated universe, it is a mask because I remember he is shown without the mask on. Yeah, okay, and he's like, you know, he looks like every other man in the DC animated universe. Okay, 
whatever else. Anyway, I, I, I love him as a character. There's one point where he's breaking into a secure facility and there's like a key code lock on the front door that he stares at and does like the hmm face at. And then he walks off camera and comes back holding a gigantic potted plant. Then he launches into the, uh, into the glass door. It's just, I, 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 I like him. I like him a lot. Yeah, yeah, the question is who Rorschach's parenting, or in my case, the other way around, because I, I experienced Rorschach before the question. Um, Teen Titans slapped so hard, still, and Batman the Animated Series broke Catwoman, got a dumpy. Thank you for your contribution. Yeah, the Teen Titans show is really good. Not as good on as an adult on a rewatch, by the way. A lot of the stuff that you like from Teen Titans was just worse versions of an Americanization of anime tropes that got done perfectly in Avatar The Last Airbender. Like, everything people like about Teen Titans is basically, it was a cartoon marketed to children in the time that it was, uh, but it, they were the characters were adult proportioned and they had like more complex story arcs and stuff. Um, but it was done better in Avatar. I still think it's really good, but I, I think that like a lot of it, a lot of it was because before that, like animation, for kids in in the West was pretty much limited to like Dexter's Lab tier shit, where there there wasn't really an effort at, um, uh, you know, like continuous storylines and stuff. No, I didn't watch Young Justice. Really, Flavier? Holy shit! Well, they don't use them that way in the uh, DC animated universe, at least. Yeah, I remember Mind Forge. In their defense, most media is worse than ATLA. That is true. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. That is enough. That is enough. We have to read these donos, folks. Folks, we have to read these donos. Many people are saying this, most especially me. Um, hold on. Yeah, I saw some, yeah. Okay. <gasps> V Raptor, thanks to the gifted tier one sub. Vosh, the question was originally created by Steve Ditko, who was meant to be an objectivist, but was rewritten because the writers hated Ayn Rand. Based! He comes off as kind of a joke character in the show as well, but in a way that I like. Kaiser Dremon, thank you for the $10. I really appreciate that. What are the least car dependent cities in America? Keep on. Um, I've heard that a lot of the former, like, Rust Belt cities, like Chicago, actually have um a, a lot of provisions for for walking around and stuff. Um that's what I've heard. Minneapolis, like stuff in the area, you know, stuff where the Rust Belt was. Mostly on the East Coast, you know, because those cities were built before cars. Quotet, thanks the five bucks. The Shazam episode nearly canceled all of the JLU. Really? Oh, yeah, I remember that. That episode that I talked about before with Shazam was written by a guy who made an effort to put more politics in, the, uh, in, in his shows, got backlash for it, yeah, um, it was really good. Dude, yeah, in this in this scene, Shazam is being confronted by the Justice League because Shazam made a casually positive comment about Lex Luthor doing a humanitarian thing, and because he's a superhero in the Justice League, his his that was interpreted as an endorsement for his presidency, and the scene is basically. Superman going like, okay, we're superheroes. We don't endorse politicians. We don't do advertisements. Um, it was more political than like anything else I'd seen at the time in terms of like what you could get away with in a kid's superhero cartoon. Really good stuff. 